This is my booktube newbie tag where I'll be answering eight questions that I thought were really fun, a great way to introduce myself and my uh, reading channel. So the first question is, why did you start this channel? I started Brett Reads because I've been reading for the last few years with a particular amount of uh, vigor and excitement, but I don't really have a community or friends who are big readers that specifically are reading the books that I'm reading. So I thought it would be a great way to share my thoughts on what I'm reading and also connect with other folks who have read those books. So that's my main motivator. It's just trying to connect with other readers and share my thoughts on the books that I've read. Question number two. What are some fun and unique things that you can bring to BookTube? I think that I have some ideas for approaching the videos and content where I really love to cover the entire bibliography of some of my favorite authors because I think when you read all of the works of an author or a lot of works of an author, you sort of get more of a more context for how the works fit into uh, their lives and how their skill as a writer has progressed. I love being able to see the writer evolve while reading through their different works. So my dream would be to create videos where I introduce an author, make a video for each of their works, and then create a final video in that series that wraps it all up and ties it together. Some of the authors that I've thought about doing so far are just some of my favorite authors, which I'll talk more about later in the video, but um, Haruki Murakami, Franz Kafka, Ursula K. Le Guin, she's got such a huge bibliography that I might limit it to certain series of hers. I would love to do one on Kobo Abe, um, Banana Yoshimoto, and uh, sort of, maybe there are some other authors too I'd love to cover the whole bibliography. Kurt Vonnegut comes to mind. Um, those are the ones I'm most familiar with, but I think it would be fun to do it with authors that I'm not as familiar with too. That's one unique thing. Second unique thing would be that I've read, or I come to this having not read much growing up, in, specifically in middle school and high school, so I've come to reading later in life, and I haven't read a lot of the classics, and I'm not a huge genre reader in terms of what's really popular. I've instead sort of focused on reading somehow Japanese authors because I think that's what got me into reading. And then I just, you read one author you like, and then you research other authors like them, and it kind of leads down that path. So hopefully I can bring this perspective and bring these books that maybe are less, less, less widely read and um, more just sharing what I'm enjoying. Number three, what are you most excited about? I think this goes back to the wanting to connect with other readers. That has me most excited, just connecting with other readers, hearing from folks about what they enjoyed or didn't enjoy about specific novels and getting to um, be in conversation with people. I think it would be really cool to have others be on the show and be featured in episodes for books that they really like or authors they really like. So the idea of connecting with people is very appealing. Number four, why do you love reading? I think about this a lot because when it comes to free time and leisure time, there's a lot of things that any one person could spend their time doing. And I choose intentionally to read because I love how it makes me feel during and after and getting lost in those worlds and universes. I like having to use my own imagination. Bringing that to the table is really huge. Um, bringing my own self and imagery to a book really makes it feel more personal. I love the stories that are told and how they vary widely and they're not limited or constrained by scope or budget or um, anything that maybe movies, TV shows, and games are constrained by. So I love 
I love that there's not a limitation. I really love being connected to the author. It's one of the rare artistic mediums that are long form, but you're connected to one voice usually. Maybe there's two. Um, and you, the editor definitely plays a role. But usually it's you have this connection with one voice and that's really strong and powerful. I love that. And then there's this sort of more abstract reason why I love reading, which is like, I think you can read a good book and I think a book can impact you and change how you look at the world or look at yourself or perceive others. And uh, fiction can do that. And nonfiction can be a way to learn and grow too. So yeah, I love that it has this like a deeper, some books have this deeper meaning to me than just entertainment or a way to pass the time. So um, yeah, that's why I love reading. Also, I love that it's challenging that it's not just progressing forward with each frame at a time, but instead you have to really engage with it, whether that's reading a book or listening to an audio book. If you stop engaging with it and your mind drifts, you lose the thread. And um, I think some things in life, or a lot of things in life, when they're challenging and you put in that bit of effort, uh, the reward is all the greater. Number five, what book or series got you into reading? This is a really easy question to answer, which is Haruki Murakami's 1Q84. I saw someone recommend it on Twitter. I thought, oh, I trust this person. I'll read it. And this was about 10 years ago. Um, and that was the first time as an adult where I read something and really fell in love with it and just realized like, oh gosh, I love reading. Uh, this is so cool. And then proceeded to read a bunch of Murakami. And um, had some stints where I stopped reading. Got back into reading. But then for the last like three, four years, been really focused on reading. Number six. Which question would you ask your favorite booktubers? Question to you, favorite booktubers. The whole person who I saw this tag from and started this is the channel Man Carrying which he just makes these really funny videos that crack me up, but then has some other non-humor videos about the books he's reading that uh, I think he just does a really great job with, and I really like his videos. And for just generally, I would ask is, how do you fight against, or do you not even fight against the desire to read more books because of your perceived size of who your audience would be for the videos that you would then make? That is something that, I've been thinking about and how how when something is popular and people create content relating to it because they like it but also because a factor of it has to be because that thing is popular then does that just keep feeding into making the thing more popular and how do you think about that and feel about that and there are so many books and series and authors out there mm -hmm. so that would be my question number seven what challenges do you think starting a booktube channel will be hardest to overcome? I think that the two, and this is probably pretty common, would just be consistency. So regularly recording videos, especially when life gets busy and maybe I'm reading less or not finishing books. Because I'll go through stints where I'll read a whole lot and then I'll kind of slow down and I'll read a whole lot. And that waviness probably isn't aligned with releasing regular videos and then also just that idea of like is my like perceived audience of making this going to influence what I then read whereas before like right now how do I choose what I read and yeah just curious if that will be difficult and if I'll start feeling like I need to read certain things or not but I think really like hopefully it'll just be people recommending things suggesting things talking about things and then reading more, sharing, and just kind of continue with that journey. So, uh, yeah, not too worried about challenges. I think this is just for fun and um, a way to connect with people and share what I'm enjoying or what I'm experiencing. Number eight is, what kind of books do I like to read? I like reading a pretty wide mix of things, and um, but, but it's fairly focused at times. But I'd say my favorite thing is... I like sci-fi, 
and William Gibson and sort of like uh, Ancillary Justice, those are two standouts um, by Anne Leckie. Like, that's the sort of sci-fi that like captures my imagination I really love. Also Kurt Vonnegut, where that's starting to like shift into literary fiction. And I just love, uh, just like straight up literature. I haven't read a lot of the classics, so I've been reading a lot of classics and enjoying those. So sci-fi, classic literature, let's just say literary fiction, like Murakami and uh, Franz Kafka and like authors in that vein. So kind of like surrealism, magical realism. And uh, a tidbit of fantasy here and there, but I'm not big into fantasy in terms of like, I haven't read a bunch of series. Um, I haven't, don't have a deep knowledge of, of different fantasy series, but I enjoy it from time to time. And I have enjoyed fantasy outside of books. So I know I like the genre. I've read a fair amount of Stephen King as a sort of like, he's like my guilty pleasure read where I read it and it's, it's just like purely entertaining and sometimes he surprises me and I really enjoy it, but I'm not like a devoted Stephen King fan. I like criticizing him and thinking about it. And I think as the, one of the most widely sold authors or maybe the best selling author of all time, um, I think it's good to be critical of him. <laughs> like, what does he care? Like, he's like wildly successful. So it's fun to then take that and, um, read his books and then think about it and kind of pick it apart. So um, I have like a guilty pleasure read with Stephen King, but don't read too much other like fiction like King. So that's kind of an anomaly in the reading. And then I read a decent amount of graphic novels, indie comics and manga, which I'd like to cover too, because a lot of it's interesting, uh, particularly like, like weirder things or th- series that might be off the beaten path. I'm really drawn to certain visual art styles and um, strong storytelling. So yeah, I think that covers the scope. But the primary focus will just be on whatever I'm reading, which generally is sci-fi, literary fiction, and some comics and manga and graphic novels, and maybe the odd fantasy novel here and there. Which, uh, yeah, hopefully it's not too eclectic and wide-ranging, but I think readers have a lot of different interests and um, happy to uh, just try to share it all and see what other folks are into it. Alright, thanks a lot and I'll see you in future updates.